You've just deployed your application to Azure App Service, and now it's live for everyone to see. But that might not be what you intended. Instead of the whole world, you just want a select group of lucky people to be able to access your application. That's where user authentication comes in. Luckily, Azure App Service provides built-in capabilities for authentication and authorization. It is also known as Easy Auth. As the name suggests, it should be pretty easy to set up, but you just need to know where to look. In this video, I'll show you how to add authentication to your app on Azure App Service in just a few steps. In this video, I'll be using a Shiny application, but the steps are applicable for applications written in other languages as well. If you would like to know how to get your Shiny app on Azure App Service in the first place, I would recommend to check out one of my other videos about deploying your Shiny app to Azure App Service. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, we're going to head over to our app service and we're going to click on authentication. Here we can add an identity provider. If we click on that, we can select an identity provider and there's lots to choose from, including Microsoft Entra ID, but also Apple and any other OpenID Connect provider. We go for Entra ID here. Then we're getting to the settings and we can leave everything as is. And once we're happy with that, we can click on add. We can now see that our identity provider was added. At the same time, an enterprise application was generated for us. So we're going to take a look there. In the enterprise application, we can see that our Hangman Shiny enterprise application is there. And when we click on that, we can see the properties of this enterprise app, including the application ID and the object ID. We're going to head over to properties. In the properties, we can set the settings for this particular enterprise app, and we're going to make the assignment required, meaning that we would need to assign users to our app for them to be authenticated. We save it and we then head over to users and group where we can add our first user to our application. We select users that are currently enabled in Entra ID and that is just one, it is me, and I'm going to select myself and add myself to the app. Once that's done, you can see that I was added here and I'm now visible as a user on this enterprise application. Now, when I head over to our app service, we can see how this works. We click on our application and we're then going to open our app. As you would expect, we see here that we are now being logged in. As I'm already logged in as myself, I only need to accept the permissions. Once I do that, I get redirected to the app and we can start playing the game as expected. Now, to put this to a real test, we're going to head over to a private browser where I'm currently not logged in, and we're going to see if we are prompted to log into this application. As you can see, we're prompted to log in and we can provide our details. And once we did, we see the hangman game. So with just a couple of steps, we have enabled authentication for application on Azure App Service. Now, the next step would be to add more users to our application because now it's just me and that feels a little bit lonely. So let's do that. To add users, we're going to head over to Microsoft Entra ID. And first of all, we're going to change some settings here because as you can see, the name of Entra ID is default directory and that's not really a nice name. So we can change that in properties. This is important if you want to have your invitation email look nice as well. I'm going to change the name here to Hybrid, but you can choose anything that you want. Just don't forget to save it. Once that's done, we can start adding users. So we're going to head over to our users and you will see me there. 
because I'm just the only user, but we can change that by clicking on new user. There are two options, creating a new user for in the organization or invite an external user. And I'm going to show you the second option. When you do that, you need to provide information like the email address, the display name, and you can also give an invite message if you would want to. We're just going to do that because that is what's going to end up in the email that I will show you a little bit later. You can add all kinds of properties to the user, first name, last name, the user type, um, literally all the information that you would want to on a user. And uh, we're just going to leave that blank now for demo purposes. Once that's done, you can invite the user and you will see the user showing up. Just don't forget to refresh. And here you will see our Jane Doe now added as a user as well. If we click on Jane Doe, we can see all the information related to Jane, one, when the user was created, but also uh, whether or not the user has received the invitation and has accepted it. Now we need to add Jane to our application. So we're going to head over to the application section within Jane. And here we can see that she has no application assigned. So we need to change that. We're going to head over to our enterprise applications and we're going to select our Hangman Shiny Enterprise app. Then within here, we're going to head over to users and groups. And here we can add a user or group to the application, just as we previously did when it was just me. But now we will also see Jane there. So we can select her and then add her to this particular application. Once that's done, the user will get invited to this app. And I just want to show you what that email is looking like. It looks like this, and um, it's not the most amazing email you have ever seen but it does the job and the user can accept the invitation here. If a user can log in, the user should also be able to log out. So we're going to make that happen. We can log ourselves out if we go to the live application, go to the URL and then attach dot art slash logout to it. You will see that we get prompted to log out from a certain account. Then we end up at a very ugly logout page, which I will come back to a little bit later. But we can implement this knowledge in our application by simply creating a button that has an href that is pointing to this particular slash dot art slash logout location. Super simple, but very effective. Going to show you what the button looks like. This is run locally and we will see the button in the top right corner. If we click on it locally, we obviously get redirected to a page that doesn't exist, but this will be perfectly fine on the deployed version of our app. I'm going to show you that here, this is a deployed version. And if we click on the logout button, we get correctly redirected to the logout page. We always get redirected back to this awful logout page, which doesn't look good at all. So we would want to have something different there. Instead of redirecting back to this particularly awful page, we would want to redirect the user to another page, perhaps a logout page that you have constructed yourself, or perhaps your company page, the internet page, or whatever you want. Luckily, we can do that and we simply need to add something to the href that we specified earlier. And instead of just simply saying dot art slash logout, we need to add a post logout redirect URI to this particular string. I'm going to redirect here to the root. So I'm just going to use a slash here, but you could use anything. You could also use an external website. Just don't forget to encode it properly. Once you do that, and once you redeploy your application again, your app will automatically redirect to this new location. In our case, this means that once we log out, we get redirected back to where our application is hosted. So this is just the base URL of our application, which then allows us to log in again if we would want to. 
In the last part of this video, we'll go over the steps to retrieve information about the logged in user. We're going to make that happen with a little bit of a JavaScript. In the Shiny app, I have created a JavaScript called odd.js and this contains the necessary JS to retrieve user information. Don't be scared by what you're seeing here. It's super simple. Um, basically, whenever the document is ready and whenever Shiny is connected, we're going to make a GET request to a particular URL. This URL is the location of our deployed application followed by slash odd slash me, which contains user information about the logged in user. We can extract all kinds of information from here and we're going to get the name, the preferred username and the ID here. Most of this information is stored in an object called user claims. Now we're going to construct an object called user data and this object we're going to pass to shiny and we're going to do that with shiny.setInputValue and we're going to store this information in input called Azure Alt. Now when we cannot succeed in the GET request because we're running this locally for instance we're going to make sure that the user data contains at least some data but just some placeholder data in this case an unknown name an unknown preferred username and an unknown user id then in our application we're going to put an observer around this input azure odd and whenever the name is unknown we will simply show a notification which is very general and does not contain a name. But once we do know the name of the user, we're going to show a customized and personal notification with the name of the user. Time to see that in action. If we go to our deployed application and if we now log in, then we see my name appearing and that means that this is working. So that's perfect. And that's how you add authentication to your application on Azure App Service in just 10 minutes. How's that for easy alt? If you like this video and if you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.